Over now to Mozambique, where President Philippe Nyusi has indicated interest to run for re-election in 2019. Nyusi is expected to square off with opposition Renamo party leader Afonso Glakama, whose supporters have fought with government forces since a disputed election three years ago. Both leaders met for the first time since 2015 in August, raising hopes of a resolution to the conflict whose skill is difficult to gauge. Nyusi told delegates at the ruling party's conference that he would continue with efforts to peace, for peace with Dokama, who has been in hiding at the Gorongosa Mountains with hundreds of fighters. 57-year-old Nyusi has been in power since 2014 when he was picked by Frelimo to succeed Armando Glebuza. Frelimo has ruled Mozambique since independence in 1975. A public affairs analyst at Jet Al Tonio joins us now to talk more about this. Thank you very much for coming on Network Africa. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. So yeah. Mozambique's president says he would run for another term in office. Is this a step towards ending the sporadic clashes we've seen in the country? Well, um, the situation in Mozambique is not peculiar. It's not peculiar because uh, Frelimo had been in power since 1994. As a matter of fact, Samara Machel was a member of Frelimo. And then there was an interregnum. And then thereafter, Chisano took over. Since that period, Frelimo had been in power. Now, um, the constitution of Mozambique allows the president to run for two terms. I think it's within the remit of the current president to indicate his interest to run for another term. Now, I think where the problem is coming from is whether this particular party had been in government for too long a period, and then whether it's proper for the president to give way or perhaps indicate that he may not be running, so that it would be easy for this um, opposition, what, what's his name now? Um, uh, that's uh, Alfonso, Alfonso. Kama, yes to try and to test power. Because again, the contention concerning whether elections are disputed, it's a recurring decimal. And it's something that recurs in the whole of Africa. In Mozambique, it had been there. At the time, international observers, and local observers, had judged the election to be proper. Yet they said it was the issue of tabulation. It went as far as the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said, no, the election was fair, and the election was properly held. So it, it's just a question of disputations of elections in Africa, and I don't really know what it is with us, really. But do you see the people voting again for him? Well, that's why it's just indicated it's in his interest to, to contest. Mm -hmm. It's not left for the people. I think I've followed the Mozambican electoral process, and I think fairly, they have a very strong... Um, National Assembly. And their laws, the electoral laws are fairly also very strong. They have fairly strong institutions. So I don't see there are areas in which manipulations will come, but I don't see manipulations changing the electoral fortunes of the current president. I don't see it. Now, elections in Africa is you know marred by irregularities but what would do you think do you think that it would have a different scenario in mozambique well it may it may or it may not irregularities is a function of our our cultural background if you look at the whole of africa it's been a throwback to the king and his domain the kingdoms. So essentially you see people contesting whether they want to dethrone this king and they want another king to be enthroned. And then the current king, the president so to speak, does not now act as if he wants to let go power. And I don't see why this allure of power continues to be a headache to all of us in Africa. It cuts across the whole of Africa. I'm sure you know what's happening in Uganda today, Togo, so many other countries. And it's there before they get dethroned, there's a layer of power.
Now, in 2015, President Yusin met with the opposition leader, that's uh, um, Alfonso de la Cama, whose supporters have fought with government forces since the disputed election, which was uh, three years ago. Do you yeah. see both of them reconciling their differences? Reconciliation will not stop the fact that Alfonso wants to dethrone Yusin. They reconcile to say, okay, look, do we have a level playing field to enable us to hold a free and fair elections? And so far, from what I've seen from the electoral laws, it's been strengthened to ensure there is a level playing field. But I'm sure the institutions of Relimo are much stronger than the institutions of Renamo in terms of electoral fortunes. So that's going to be whether they are using their current position or the position they've held over the years to advantage against Renamo. That must be the, 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 the problem that uh, Alfonso is having. Other than that, there doesn't appear to be any, any problems with the electoral laws of Mozambique. Now let's talk about the economy of Mozambique. I mean, despite the recent economic growth, the yeah. 24 million people in that country are still living below poverty line. What does this say about the government? It only, show, it only tells you that GDPs don't really translate to prosperity of the people. And our people could jack up GDPs and say, okay, look, the economy has grown, but what is the effect on the people and, and it's also a function of our extractive nature in Africa. Extractive where the people work and the people don't get um, commensurate income for the, for the work that they do. And it's, it's a throwback. The, the presidential system of government that most African countries have come to adopt I don't want to condemn it wholesale, but I know also that it does not help in prospering the people. Because the institutions and the people that take government wreak more of the fortunes to themselves as against the people. So it's going to be that way, except they begin to look at processes by which they de-escalate the cost of governance and then put more money on the table for the people. Right, thank you. Thank you very much. Public Affairs Analyst Ejeta Otonio for coming on Network Africa. Thanks, VC. It's my pleasure.